Trust me, you don't want to have a heart attack. Hello, nation. Did you know that five out of every 10 Americans will die from heart disease? Did you also know that eight out of 10 Americans living with diabetes will pass away from heart disease? Which is why it is so important to pay attention to the, ready for this? Cardiovascular risk factors, the ones that lead to heart disease. Now, people with type two diabetes are at slightly higher risk for heart disease than those with type one diabetes. But the bottom line is we all have to pay attention to these risk factors to prevent heart disease. Now, what are the main cardiovascular risk factors? First one is abnormal cholesterol levels. We'll talk about that more later on. The second is elevated blood pressure. Now, blood pressure goes up and down throughout the day, kind of like airline ticket prices and rent-a-car rates. And that's why every person with diabetes really needs to have a blood pressure cuff, just like they would have a home glucose monitoring device. And you would measure your blood pressure at different times, in the morning, after exercise, not a million times a day, maybe you're once or twice during the week. And it's really important to realize that controlling your cholesterol and controlling your blood pressure has a much greater effect to reduce your risk for heart disease than even controlling your blood sugar levels, for example, following your A1C. Now, the third big risk factor is the hypercoagulable state. What does that mean? It means that the blood forms clots easier, and this is true in people with diabetes. Now, if you have a blood clot that's traveling down an artery, and it finally gets so get so further along that it blocks the blood flow to whatever that artery is feeding, i.e. the heart and the brain. And remember, the blood carries oxygen, and if there's not enough oxygen going to the brain or the heart, you have a stroke and a heart attack. Now, what are the recommendations for preventing this hypercoagulable state or the propensity to develop clots? Basically, the American Diabetes Association says anybody that turns 50, put on a baby aspirin a day. Now, don't go out and take aspirin based on the Edelman report. You gotta talk to your caregiver because some folks have aspirin allergies. Some folks may already be on a blood thinner that they were prescribed for some other reason, but it's pretty important. It's a very protective medication. Just one baby aspirin a day. Now, us very sophisticated endocrinologists call these risk factors the ABCs of diabetes care. A for aspirin, but also A1C. B is blood pressure. C is cholesterol. Now, we've already talked about A, which is aspirin. What about blood pressure? How do we screen? We talked about getting a blood pressure cuff, measuring it several times throughout the day. And if your blood pressure is good every time, you don't have to measure it that much. Now, what is a normal blood pressure? Typically, the top number called the systolic blood pressure is 120 to 130, which really is the pressure that your heart works against. The second number, the diastolic, is typically what we want is 70 to 80. It's called millimeter of mercury, which is pressure. That's the diastolic. That's the, how much your heart works when it's relaxing. So you'll always hear two numbers. And we don't have to get into the details now, but it's just very important to realize high blood pressure over the years will really cause heart disease. It also causes havoc with kidney function as well. So it's really important to get your, get on an aspirin if your doctor says it's okay, make sure your blood pressure is at goal, and then C is cholesterol. Now, cholesterol is pretty sophisticated. We have the total cholesterol, the HDL, the LDL, and the triglycerides. And we're gonna talk about that in detail on the next Edelman Report. Trust me, you don't want to have a heart attack. So long, nation.